Right? On page 90 in the book, you'll see a picture of the spinning top that you use for the spinning top test. Now, you only do this kind of test if you have a single phase generator. Okay, it doesn't work for a, any type of three phase generator, just a single phase generator. If you look on page 92, there's another thing called a penetrometer. All right, this is um, a device you're going to use to test the x-ray machine to see if the milliamps and the timer are working like they're supposed to. So it's just a little piece of metal about this big, and it looks like a little staircase. And you're going to take one cassette... And you're going to put that penetrometer on one half of it. It's got lines on it like this. And you're going to cover the other part of the cassette with lead. Okay, and you're going to take an x-ray of it. And then you take it and move it from this side to this side and cover up this side of the film. All right. So you're basically taking uh, two pictures on the same piece of film of this little metal device called a penetrometer. Now, what you're doing is you're testing the, the milliamps and the time. Okay, when you do these two x-rays, it tells you what numbers to use for milliamps and time. For the first one, you use 100 ma and one half second. And what about the second one? 200 ma Okay, 200 ma and one fourth. All right, each one of those represents the same amount of radiation. Okay, in other words, what's a hundred times one half? Fifty. Fifty. And what is two hundred times one fourth? Okay, so what you're doing when you do this test is you're changing the numbers but you're not changing the amount of radiation. So what, what should the pictures look like? Should they look the same? Should they look different? Should one be darker than the other? Okay. What do you think should happen? The same. They should look the same. Even though we're changing the numbers around, the amount still equals the same. Okay. So if we get this picture and we've got these two different sides and one side looks a lot darker than the other, then we know that when we change the MA or the time, there's something wrong with the circuit because it's not really reading what we have it set at. It's like if you ever got pulled over for speeding and you tell the cop, well, I was going 55, that's where the needle was, and he says, well, I had you clocked at 65. You know your speedometer's off, right? Okay, so it's the same thing. Even though you have the number set to a certain number, they could actually be wrong if there's something wrong with the electrical circuit. So they should look the same. Okay? If one looks darker than the other, then you know that there's something wrong either with the timer or with the milliamps. That's called the MAS reciprocity test. All right, you can do this same test to check your kilovoltage. Okay? Remember the kilovolts, the KVP, that affects the anode. Okay, so you can do the same test, but what you're going to change this time, instead of changing the MA and the time, you're going to change the KVP. So you'll do one of them with 50 KVP and one with 60. Okay, so you do the same thing. You take a picture of this side and of this side. Now. What you should see is you don't want these two to look exactly alike. Okay, this one and this one should not be the same. One should just be a little bit, it's like one step up, so just a little bit darker than the other one. Because when you change the KVP, that changes it just a little bit. Like remember earlier when we did the uh, math where you increase the KVP by 15%, okay? It's going to make it either darker or lighter, depending on if you increase or decrease so these two should look slightly different. Okay? If they look the same, 
then you know there's something wrong with the high voltage circuit, which is your KVP circuit. So the reason why you're doing this is because if, if your x-rays, you're taking a bunch of x-rays and they're all coming out too dark or they're coming out too light, you have to call somebody to come out and work on it and they're going to want to know, you know, what's it doing. It's just like when your car is messing up and you call the mechanic, they're going to start asking you questions. What is it doing? You know, does it start or does it start up and then it dies? So it's kind of the same thing. You're, you're not really going to fix the machine, but you kind of have to figure a little bit out, you know, as far as what's wrong with it before you have somebody to come out there. All right, now you can also have, on the bottom of page two of the notes, you can also have mechanical problems with the uh, x-ray machine. And it starts talking about that on page 93 in the book. Okay, the first one is called beam restriction. It says, if the patient is positioned properly and the tube is in alignment with the film and a clear streak is down one side of the film, the collimator needs to be adjusted or aligned. Okay, in other words, you have the patient on the table. Let's say you have the light shining right down on their knee. Okay, and you have the central ray right where the knee is. But when you take the x-ray, it, it actually cuts part of the knee off. So there's like a clear part on your film and then you only get like half of the knee, for example. What that means is even though the light is shining straight down on it, it's not in alignment. Okay, in other words, the x-ray beam is actually coming out at a different direction than what the light is showing you. So you're not really aiming the x-ray beam where it needs to be. So it's, it's sort of like the car getting out of alignment, your front wheels. All right? So that's a mechanical problem. That doesn't happen too often, but that would be something that would happen. All right, on page three in the notes and on page 94 in the book, also it could be your grid. Okay, there's a couple of things that can happen with a grid. Um, I saw one office once where all their x-rays were coming out with lines going up and down in the x-rays. Remember, the grid is supposed to vibrate so that you don't see those lines. But there was a problem with the grid. It didn't vibrate, so every x-ray they took just had a bunch of lines in it. So they knew that they had to get the grid replaced because of that. Also, if you're using a grid and you get the x-ray tube too close to the film, the grid is not going to filter the, radi the scatter radiation out. So the distance that you're supposed to use is important. You don't want to mix that up. Okay, another problem you can have is with the cassette. Okay, you have your x-ray cassette, you put the film inside of it, but any scratch that you have on the outside of the cassette would be a line that would show up in the x-ray. So if this is the cassette, and you get a, a, like a deep scratch that goes across it right there, Every time you use that cassette to take an x-ray, that line is going to be in the x-ray. Okay, so you got to take care of the cassette. Sometimes you need to clean, the, you need to open it up and clean the inside of the cassette. And there's only certain things that you can use to clean it with. All right, what does it say here in the notes that you're going to clean it with? Camel's hair brush. Okay, there's a thing called a camel's hair brush, sort of like a little paintbrush. So you can open up the cassette and dust it out, and then there's a spray that you can spray in there to clean it. It's just called a screen cleaner. That's the only thing that you should use. And you can use uh, like a 4x4 four four gauze to wipe it, okay? But you don't want to spray it with any other type of cleaner, okay? You don't want to scrub it with anything else because that will mess up the cassette. So any damage to the cassette would show up as marks on your x-ray, okay? Things that you don't want to show up on the x-ray. 